Hi everyone, my name is Rachel and this is my first video on YouTube. In this video, I'm going to show you the techniques and products that I use almost on a daily basis that have been total game changers for me and my makeup routine. Uh, my focus is definitely on having my skin look lifelike and my makeup lasting all day without using a ton of product or looking cakey. Um, if you're familiar with JLo's makeup artist, Scott Barnes, then you'll notice that I draw heavily from his techniques of layering contour under foundation and really working in layers to build something that's got a lot of dimension to it. I just modify the products that I use so that it's you know appropriate for daily life. I do work in an office setting, so I can't show up at 7.30 a.m. with a full mask of makeup. Uh, so if you want to look stunning but not startling, I think you'll like this approach. Let's go ahead and get into that, but before we do, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you're notified of my future posts. Next time you see me, I'm going to have digressed considerably in the looks department. I can't freaking wait. Let's go. Hey. <laughs> Alright, if you're not convinced after seeing the transformation that I'm capable of, I don't know what to tell you. I have prepped my skin with some skin plumping gel cream from Hotalabo. It is a hyaluronic acid gel moisturizer and it leaves the skin a little bit tacky. For that reason, I typically don't use primer. The first step that we are going to get into makeup wise is cream contour. My product of choice lately has been the Maybelline Superstay Multi-Use Foundation Stick in the shade Mocha. Um, this is pretty dark. I apply it in a really sheer layer in the places that I want to redefine or shape. Um, so I will obviously do my hairline and I try to round out my hairline quite a bit. I have like a 90 degree angle hairline. So I try to make my face more of an oval shape with that step. I will also do the cheekbones. I do around my lips, nose, and then on my jawline. And the brush that I use to apply this is a contour fan from Real Techniques. It's my favorite brush for this. I take product off of the foundation stick instead of uh, putting the product directly on my face and then blending out. And then I have a glass palette down here that I work from. It's actually not even intended to be a palette. I think this is something you put candles on. I don't know. I bought it on Amazon and it works great because it's really big surface. I'll put my foundation here. I pour my powders out here and then I'll even work my concealer on the palette as well. So if you don't have something like this, you can use a plate. You can use literally anything. It's just good to have something to work from so you can get your products out and ready to use. So I'm going to tap off some of that product onto the palette like that so it's not super intense. And then I'm just going to start with my forehead going in. Whoa, that's dark. Holy moly. You guys, this is going to look really shocking. Um, just bear with me while, while we work through it. So like I said, I'm kind of rounding out my face here and I work it into the hairline. Now, as far as other products you could use, uh, you can use concealer, you can use cream bronzer, you can use obviously contour sticks. Whatever you want to use is fine. I like to use something pretty dark, you know, quite a bit darker than my skin tone so that the contrast is there whenever I put the foundation on top of it. So let's move on to cheekbones. Like here is kind of where I'm wanting that shadow to stop. So I'll go down to there kind of turn the fan sideways and blend it. She's looking cute. And doing contour this way is really forgiving because you don't have anything else that you can mess up right now. So if you get it a little too far in or the placement isn't right, you can kind of tweak it before you put your foundation on top. And that's really nice. I think that's one of the best things about this is it's easy. To me, it's kind of difficult to apply foundation first and then go over the top with cream contour. The product moves around and it gets kind of muddy. Um, so I really like this approach for that. It's just super user friendly. So we're gonna contour the nose as well. What I'm just trying to do is shorten my nose. So I'm gonna put you know darker color here to make it not look so long. If you don't want to shorten your nose, then keep the tip of your nose free of any contour. And then I do go down the sides like this. 
And that looks crazy, but we'll get there. Okay, so now I'm going to contour the jawline. Um, so what we're gonna be doing is taking the product and going on the jawline. So I start behind my ear. This is still your jaw here. See that? And then I'm going underneath. You don't want to go on to your face with this. You really want to keep it on the jawline and underneath here. Go behind my ear and blend that downward. And what this helps do is uh, define your face by making your face stick out further than your neck. So your neck kind of recedes because it's darker. Remember any of the areas that you are putting contour on, uh, contour on, they're going to kind of fall back. And where you put lighter color, that's going to kind of pull the eye forward. So you want to remember that whenever you're deciding where you want to place the color. And I really do go pretty far back with it so that, you know, if you're looking at me from the side or that my hair moves, that there's not some big area that has no makeup on it or that's a different color than the rest of my skin. That's not a good look. We're trying to make all of this seamless. So we're going to go down the neck with it and blend all of that out. That nose is not so blended. Let's do something about that. Blend down onto the chest, and we're also going to be putting foundation on top of this so it'll marry it all together. Okay, she's looking good. Last contour step is my favorite. We're going to create a shadow around the lips, and I'm using a tiny little contour stick. I bought this at the Dollar Tree, you guys, and it has never failed me. It's from LA Colors. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is almost line around the lips and give myself a chocolate mustache. So instead of overlining the lips, you can do this trick under your foundation and it does create a little nice border around the lips and makes them stand out from your face a little bit. That's why this is such a good trick and you should not skip this step, I don't think. Okay, so we have all of our contour laid down. Now we're going to move on to foundation and I'm so excited because I love talking about the foundation that I've been using. You've probably already heard about it, but it's the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear Foundation and it's a medium coverage foundation. It dries down to a really like skin-like natural finish and that's why I like it. I am mixing two shades. I'm mixing 420 and 440. So I'm gonna put some of that down onto my glass palette. And I'm going to be applying the foundation with a foundation brush from Real Techniques. This is somewhat dense, but it still has enough movement in the bristles for it to not disturb all the foundation underneath. You can really use whatever type of brush you want. Just know that you need to use very little pressure whenever you're applying so that you don't move all of this stuff around underneath. So I've got my foundation on my palette here. I'm gonna dip in. I'm gonna grab just a tiny bit and then on my palette, I'm gonna work this out. Like I'm going to stamp, 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 stamp until there's very little product hanging out at the surface of the bristles. Kind of work it into the brush a little bit. See how I'm like, I have shared this out quite a bit. I start in the cheek area and then I kind of work upward and outward. Um, And we wanna use a tiny amount so that it looks really natural and you can still kind of see your skin through it. And you can also still see the contour through it. And you just barely go over that lip line to blend that in. You see how that already looks really blended? You guys, it is super early here. And I tried to film really early because uh, my mic picks up noises from outside and like every which way so you'll hear trucks going by or people outside So hopefully there's not a lot of interference and outside noise. I tried to do that on purpose um, I have a lapel mic as well, but that's super difficult because I don't like it showing in the shot and then it also if I hide it, it and I move around my clothing kind of like rustles over it so it's really tricky doing this stuff, you guys, especially alone. 
I have no one to tell me like, hey, you're out of focus or this and that. And I've actually filmed several videos before this one and something technical ends up happening and I can't use the footage. It's just, it's been such a learning experience for me and it's great because every time I mess up, I learn something, but it's also been really frustrating <laughs> because I wanna get going. I want to get to posting. I'm one of those people that wants to be perfect at everything that I do and that's, <sighs> guys, that's just not life. You're not gonna sit down and freaking kill it on your first go. You just have to keep doing it until you get it right. So I'm still hanging in there. Okay, when I get to the forehead, I use so little foundation because I really like to just meet up with that contour and blend it out. I think the look is so much better when you don't use a ton of product on top of it. Go up into the hairline. Blend her out. And don't forget your ears. I'll avoid putting my earrings on, or at least the big ones, um, until after I'm done doing makeup so I can get my earlobe and kind of do like this number. You want everything to be married together that, that is visible. And also, when you're matching foundation, don't necessarily match to your face. My face is always so much paler than the rest of my body because I wear sunscreen. So I try to pick something that's going to mesh with the color of my body. And especially if I'm wearing something sleeveless or you can see my arms. And try not to get this stuff too much into your hair because that kind of gives you away a little bit. You want to work it into the hairline, but you don't want to have a bunch of like bronzy or foundation covered hairs all around your hairline and if you do have earrings in when you do your makeup make sure you wipe off your little studs or whatever it is so that there's not cloudy foundation all over them i've definitely been guilty of that <laughs> let's see i just hate taking my earrings out I, ha I usually wear three so it's kind of a pain i leave them in a lot of the time and i also go up onto the top of my ear too here Okay, let's get this nose covered up. This is killing me. And then I go on to the eyes as well. And guys, if I'm sniffling, I am so sorry. I picked up some kind of cold or something while I was in Miami for a Tony Robbins event. Like or comment or both if you're here because I posted on the UPW page. Hey! We're also going to go down the neck. I use a very, very, very light layer. You're understanding the theme now, I'm sure. But I'll go down the neck. Make sure when you're doing this, you're getting underneath there and really blending that line. Don't disrupt it too much, but you want it blended because when you look up or over, you don't want someone to see a big old streak of contour. This shirt is really low cut. Like I was gonna wear it to work, but ooh, We just got a new HR manager, so I don't know if I wanna do that. My stinking Fitbit is vibrating. Telling me to wake up. Well, it's a little late for that Fitbit. Now, we're moving on to concealing the under eye and bringing some brightness back into the face. I'm still going steady with uh, Miss Shape Tape from Tarte, and I'm using the shade Fairlight Neutral. This is kind of a peachy undertone. And guys, when I take this wand out of the, or the applicator out of the concealer, there is a ton of product on this. So I'll take a dot, literally just like a dot of concealer, and I will tap it onto my palette and I'm going to show you how, how much I'm using it's just this tiny spot here tiny tiny bit and I'm actually going to go in with my finger and kind of warm it up tap it out and the heat from your hands is going to warm up the product a little bit and you'll be able to kind of shear it out and melt it into the skin a little bit better I'm glad I'm not wearing my lapel mic right now because my stomach is growling and I think you could probably hear it 
feed me. Okay, I'm gonna pick up a little bit more and I do go a little low in this area and then I go a little wide out here, not too far down and I don't do the big triangles where it's gonna be screaming concealer at you. I do have a sponge that I'm gonna blend this in with but I like to get the product laid down with my finger first and then I blend out with a sponge. And don't judge my nails, you guys, right now. They're just a mess. They're this sickly gray color, and I cannot wait to take this off and put something new on. I should have known better. My skin is, like, really kind of, like, green. And this, this like, grayish was not a move. At least not one that I should have made. We'll live and learn. I've already got some foundation creeping onto my lips. I hate that so bad, you guys. Okay, problem solved. All right, so now I'm gonna take my Real Techniques uh, Beauty Sponge, and it is damp. I'm just going to a little bit further blend this out. I use a little bit of concealer on my eyelid as well as my eyeshadow primer. Okay, now we're moving on to setting the face. This is really important, and even if you have dry skin, I would say try to work with it and still set. You know, moisturize your face really well, use a moisturizing foundation, but setting your makeup, it's not just about drying it down um, for the sake of oil production, when you lay down color product, you want everything to be the same texture on your face so that uh, if your bronzer hits the foundation, it's not wet and it's not going to grab in certain places and look patchy or streaky. I use two different setting powders. Yes, I know it's a little extra, but there's a reason behind it. I use the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder in the shade Fair underneath my eyes. This one is somewhat pigmented, so it really brightens the under eye, and I really like that look. So I use this for under the eye only, and then I use the RCMA No Color Setting Powder for the rest of my face, and this is translucent, so it's not going to alter the color of my makeup any. Um, I tap some of these out on my glass palette. Okay, and then the RCMA. Now, I'm gonna go in and Blend underneath my eye again so that there's no creasing. And then I'm gonna pick up some Fit Me. I pick some up, okay, and then I kind of dab it off on an area of the palette that doesn't have any powder so that it's not too crazy when I go in. Again, this stuff is pigmented. So you wanna be careful about how much you use. All right, just like that. Go over the eyelid. I typically go in and kind of blend out my forehead a little bit before I set it because I do have some little fine lines that makeup can settle into. You don't want to set a crease. That's just not what we're after. Okay, now for all over the face, I'm going to be using that translucent powder from RCMA. I pick some up on this flat side of the brush. See how crazy that is? I'm gonna take my hand and just bounce that into my hand. <coughs> okay, inhaled some powder, but no big deal. Ugh, it's a cloud. <sighs> I'm wearing black pants too, and it's all over my pants. Okay, so I take a lot of that product off, and then I go in all over the face. You do not want to use a ton of powder. There's really no reason for it when you're doing it this way. There's no benefit to using a ton of powder. It just ends up looking cakey. So just do your best to take a lot of that <laughs> powder off and really be sparing with it. Don't forget to go onto your ears. I go down onto the neck with powder as well. I'm not so worried about my makeup like melting off of my neck, but it helps to minimize transfer if you put the uh, translucent powder over the top. You know, when you hug someone and you have all of this like makeup transfer on another shirt and you're like, eh, sorry. Yeah, let's avoid that. So she's good and set. I'm liking where we're going with things. 
Next step, let's add some color back to the face. We're moving on to bronzing. I'm gonna be using two bronzers as well. I'm gonna use something that's kind of luminous, which is the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer in the shade Light Bronzer. I like the lightest one. I just feel like I have more control when I'm using that. If I had a tan, I could probably get away with some of the darker shades, but um, right now, your girl is light. I'm gonna use this powder brush from Real Techniques. And for the record, you guys, this bronzer is like, the scent is just absolutely disgusting to me. Everyone's like, oh, I love the smell of butter bronzer. I'm like, smells like freaking Banana Boat SPF 4 tanning oil. Straight up, like fake banana coconut smell. And where I'm going with this bronzer is just over the areas where we already contoured. I'm gonna go on the cheeks. And guys, we want this really blended and diffused, so I kinda spend a little time just working it. Bouncing. I can hear people outside starting to move around. Don't mess up my video. Okay. Now I'm gonna go onto the neck. Okay, perfect. Now that I've got that lighter shade of bronzer down that's got kind of some luminosity to it, I'm gonna go in with a second one and guys, don't laugh. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. I've had this for like years and somehow I haven't been able to get through it yet. They even changed the packaging already on this. This is the Too Faced uh, Chocolate Soleil Medium Deep Matte Bronzer. Uh, I freaking love this and I probably need to go ahead and just get a new one, but there's still a lot of product in here. So I'm using, this is a, actually a setting brush from Morphe. It's the M536, but I like the shape of it for getting in there with contour. So I'm gonna kind of use this as a contour powder, not really a bronzer. But I get some product on the brush and then tap it off. And then I'm gonna go in and really concentrate on the areas where I want to create a more intense shadow. So on me, I try to get it like right here, and then I will also do the corners of my forehead and right underneath here, down the sides of the nose. Okay. Just trying to lightly lay down the color and then start sweeping. And swirling. I want this to be super blended and not harsh at all. This hairline, you guys, I mean, have you seen a more square hairline? It's not possible. sides of the nose and on the tip okay how we looking for eyes I keep it super 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 simple with basically just some neutral brown matte shadows and then I do eyeliner mascara brows and that's basically it I don't get crazy with eyeshadow um, during the week usually. I like to do fun looks, you know, when I'm getting really cute, but for the most part, I just keep it really simple. I typically start with whatever bronzer I'm using as my crease color. So I'm gonna mix some butter bronzer and the Too Faced. 
bronzer and put that into the crease. I'm just using a pretty fat crease brush from Real Techniques and kind of laying the color all over the crease, like so. Swirling on the edge and bringing it in. I've actually been like blending up into my eyebrow lately and I really like the way that looks. This is not an eyeshadow tutorial by any means. We're focusing mostly on skin and just kind of completing the look with some eyes. Works for me. Next, I'm going to take a Morphe M443, which is kind of just a small little crease brush. And then I'm gonna use a Morphe eyeshadow palette. This is the Always Golden palette. It's one of their nine pan. I use this all the time. Forget how messy this thing is, you guys. <laughs> I've had it forever. But I'm just gonna use this shade here in the middle, this brown. It's kind of a neutral brown. And I'm just gonna go into the crease with that and deepen it up a bit. Again, this is not rocket science. I'm just kind of showing you what works for me on the daily. Just deepening the crease. And then I'm going to take a clean brush. This is a Morphe M513. Just a little fluffy and clean it up just a little bit. All right, good to go there. Now I'm gonna get my M433 again and I'm going to dip into that same neutral brown and then I also add a little bit of this warmer shade down here. I'm gonna pick both of those up and tap some off for the lower lash line. And really, I just look up and kind of go to town on this. Like that. Okay, that's pretty much it for that. Now we're gonna do some eyeliner. I'm using the Rimmel Scandalize Waterproof Gel Pencil in the shade Brown. This is actually not just a true brown, it's kind of a shimmery brown. Ooh, literally I just broke it off. Okay, hold please. Okay, now we're gonna move on to brows. I'm gonna be using the e.l.f. Ultra Precise Brow Pencil in the shade Neutral Brown. It's like one of these tiny little micro pencils and I love it. You should definitely go snaggy one. I think they're like five bucks and I like it even better than the Anastasia Beverly Hills one. Now I normally use the shade taupe, but I am fresh out. So I'm just gonna go really lightly with this neutral brown pencil. Okay, the brows are a little darker than I would like them to be, but that's okay. We're moving on to mascara. I'm using the Essence Volume Stylist 18 Hour Lash Extension Mascara. This one's pretty good. Another Tati recommendation. Okay, that's it for the top. And now I use a brown mascara on my bottom lashes. I just think it's a little less harsh and I like the look of that better than black on the bottom. This is the CoverGirl Lash Blast Volume in brown. Okay, that's done. I've gotten mascara basically everywhere. So I'm gonna let it dry and then I'm gonna kind of clean it up a bit. Um, so 
Don't worry about my spots. They will get handled. All right, now I'm going to do some lips because mine are parched. Okay, I'm gonna be using the NYX Lip Liner in Nude Truffle. It's my favorite, it's kind of a brown shade. Okay, and when I line my lips, what I do is I line and then I also create some shadows in the corners and put lip gloss on top of that. So I'll go in and kind of shade inside here. Same on the bottom. Lip liner is done. And the reason I do that shading is because it kind of makes the center of your lips kind of look a little more plump if you do that. And I'm gonna add some ColourPop Ultra Glossy Lip in the shade Pretty In. It's really pink in the tube, and then really what it just ends up being is kind of my lip color. When you're doing gloss, this is kind of a Scott Barnes trick, by the way. He makes sure he gets it all the way to the border of the lip, not just in the center. Okay, yay. Now all we have left is to set. After I finish that, I'm gonna go straighten my hair and then I'll be right back to wrap this thing up. I'm using the Maybelline Lasting Fix Setting Spray. It's a matte finish setting spray and I'm gonna go kinda hard with that. Normally I have my fan in my bathroom that I dry it off with. Oh my gosh. I forgot blush, dang it. How could I forget? Blush is my freaking favorite. Okay, I'm gonna be using uh, Kylie Pressed Blush Powder in the shade Pink Power. It's kind of like a baby pink. Love it. And I'm gonna be applying this with a Morphe M554. This is a setting brush, but I really like it for blush because I feel like I can control where I'm putting it a little bit better. How could I forget blush? Like what the heck? And I kind of smile and I just do apples of my cheeks. Um, on some people, I think it looks better to kind of do that um, high cheekbone look. But for me, I really like that rosiness in the center of my face. Or the center of my apples and my cheeks, really. I just love blush, you guys. I don't know what it is. It just makes everything so much more alive. Yes. More. I really like it and I want more. Ugh. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, you guys. I will be right back. All right, guys, this is the completed look. My hair is straight, my hoops are on, and I am ready to go sell some factoring at my day job. I hope you enjoyed watching this video because I definitely enjoyed filming it for you. Leave any questions you have for me in the comments below, and I will get back to you right away. I'm also linking my social media, so go follow me when you get the chance. Make sure you're subscribed, ring the bell. Um, also, if I can help you in some way, please put that down in the comments. It's really important to me that I give as much as I'm getting from anyone watching my videos or sharing my content. I really appreciate you watching and I hope you're having a great day. If not, go make it a good one. It's not too late. All right, I'll see you in my next one. Bye.